Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliet. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this cargo pant. First, you need your tie measurements. It's very important. You measure around this part as you can see on the screen. Make sure you don't measure it too tightly. And that is the measurement you're going to use to fold your fabric. So you measure your tie measurement and then divide it by 2. Add extra 1 inch to that and then use it to fold your fabric. So next we're going to be marking the crotch line. I use the hip measurement I'm working with divided by 4 for the crotch. Next I'm marking the waist to the knee. Notice that I'm not leaving any measurements out. So I'm going to use my ruler now to connect these points together. This is the knee line, the waist to the knee. And then this is the crotch line which I used my hip measurement divided by 4. I didn't add any extra inches to that. Next, I'm marking the length I'm working with. So I'm working with length of uh, 41. The actual length is 40, but I added 1 inch to it, making it 41. And then another extra 3 inches. The 3 inches is for folding and then the casing for elastic litter. So after connecting all of these lines, next on this crotch line, we're going to mark the hip measurement divided by 4 plus extra 1.5 inch. Up here, I did the same thing, hip divided by 4 plus extra 1.5. Using my curved ruler, I am curving the crotch area as you can see. Next, I'm going to measure this crotch line all the way to the end and then get the middle and then mark that point all the way to the length of the trouser so i'm using my ruler now to connect all the way down as you can see after that i went on to mark my hip line from the waist i marked nine inches down and then on this line here i am marking my waist measurement divided by four plus extra one inch waist divided by four plus one so i'm connecting that point to the hip line on this knee area i am marking half of the knee measurement divided by two so i placed my tape marked one half of it on one side and then the other half on so the knee round measurement i'm working with is 12 inch is 24 inches so divided by two that is 12 so what I did is mark 6 on one side of that middle line and then mark 6 again on one side of this other middle line. So on this hemline as well, I'm working with 16 inches. So I'm going to divide that by 2, which is going to give us 8. We'll mark 4 on one half of the line and then half 4 on this other side of the line as well. So I'm using my ruler now to connect all the points together. Next, I'm cutting, starting from this um, hip side, as you can see. Then I'm cutting this crotch area. So when I got to the end of the to the hem of the trouser, the extra three inches we added for allowance, I'm going to fold that in so it doesn't get too short when it's time to make the casing for elastic. It doesn't get smaller. So by the time I fold it in, it will spread out and then it's equal when we are folding later. So I folded it in and then I followed the line like so. So when you bring it out, you notice that it's flared out a little bit. That's very important. So here now, I folded another fabric again into two to cut out the back piece. So I'm placing this front piece on top of the back piece, making sure I have two and a half inches extra on that crotch area, like so. And then I'm adding two inches extra on the knee line and then on the hem of the trouser. Notice that we're adding these seam allowances on the crotch side of the trouser. Please ignore the way this fabric is looking, please. My iron is not responding. 
the fabric is not responding to iron so on this waistline i added extra one inch out on the waist and then i added extra one inch up so i'm connecting in the slant to meet the waist of the front piece as you can see next we're going to be cutting that out so for the hip side of the trouser we're going to cut everything the same with the front now that two inches i added on the crotch line if you are on the smaller side let's say hip of about 39 and below you can use two inches two and a half maybe too much but if you're on the bigger side the hip i'm working with is 48 so two and a half is perfect So this is it for the front and the back. Next we're going to mark the midpoint of the back piece as you can see. I folded it into two and then I made a notch. We're going to be adding that to that part later. The dart is going to be four inches long as you can see. Just in case you're wondering I am working with two yards of fabric. The fabric is by 60. Here I'm marking 13 inches wide and 13 inches long. And this is for the pocket. So I'm going to cut this out now. This fabric is 13 by 13. I'll fold into two like so. And then I will cut it open because this is for the two pockets. After that, I'm going to place the front piece on it like so and then trace out the shape for the sides now that the shapes are the same we're going to mark two inches in from this point and then seven inches down and i will make a cut there about quarter inch next i'm folding it in like so in a slant that two inches point and then the seven inch point so what you should do is put hemming gum underneath that point and iron it flat. I'm also folding the sides because this pocket is going to be on top of the front piece. It's not your regular um, side pocket. So this is how it's going to sit on the trouser like so. So I'm using my pins to hold it in place. Like so, this pocket is sitting on the right side of the front piece. So we're going to go sew that down like so. Here I have a strip of fabric that is 3 inches wide. So I'm folding half inch on one side. And then another half inch on this other side. And then I will fold again into two. We're going to use this piece for the belt loops. So I want them a bit wider just like the picture on the thumbnail. So I'm folding again into two like so. We will take this now to the machine and sew it down. I will show you that in a minute. Here I am cutting out the pocket, the side pocket. So the pockets are going to be eight inches by eight inches so eight inches long and eight inches deep but it's going to have a pleat so i made it a lot wider than i needed even the length i think i got about 12 by 12 or so so here i folded into two i'm going to mark one inch like that and we'll go so down to make that pleat which i will show you soon now for the pocket cover i have my fabric here it's measuring four inches and fold and I folded again four inches so the pocket is supposed to have a lining but I'm cutting the two together so it's four and a half and then four and a half on the other side here I'm marking one inch down and then one inch in I'm going to connect in a slant to give us that shape that you will see in a minute I'm placing it on another fabric and we're going to cut the same piece out 
So this piece here on fold now is measuring four and a half inches by eight by nine inches. So for the bed loops now, we're going to be sewing it down like I said. We're going to sew it like so. All the way and then make another stitch again on this other side. I'm going to set that aside for now. Here is the pocket. We're going to stitch down the slanted part first before stitching the pocket onto the trouser. So here now we're going to stitch it down all the way. then to this other side and everything we're doing on this leg we are going to repeat the same thing for the second leg so that is it for the pocket for now next we're going to add the zip so this is the left leg of my front trouser so I'm placing the zip like so the right side of the zip is facing the right side of the left front piece then I have this strip of fabric that is 9 inches long and then 4 inches wide folded into two. I'm sewing the zip down like so. When I get to 7 inches down from the waist, I will stop sewing there. After that, this is what it's looking like. I'm going to top stitch on this side of the front piece like so. Just make a stitch all the way down. This is for the left leg. So for the right leg now, on the right side, I'm placing another strip of fabric that is 3 inches wide and 9 inches long again. I've sewn it down and then I'm going to top stitch like so. After that, we are going to place the two front pieces right sides together like so. And then we are going to sew from where the zip stopped all the way to the end of the crotch. So we are sewing about half inch allowance. So after sewing that point, this is what the front piece is looking like. We are going to make sure everything is aligned. And then we will pin this upper part making sure that crotch area is looking smooth after that i will turn the zip now and sew it down on the other side as well so after sewing the zip down this is what we have. Now we're going to make that curve on the crotch area that you can see. I'm pushing the down flap away like so. And we'll make a stitch. You can use a chalk to make that curve before following it up with your machine so when I get to where the curve will kind of start I'm going to lift up my needle and then bring back the down part so that at this point it sews the two of them together after that that is it for the zipper fly So next we're going to sew the darts for the back piece. 
like I said, the darts are four inches long, and then we notch to the midpoint of the back piece, which is where the dart is sitting. This is it. We'll do the same thing for the second leg, and then we will join the two of them, the two back pieces together at the crotch area using half inch. So that is it for the back piece. Next is the pocket bag. I'm sewing that slant half inch. I'm sewing down half inch. The same for the other side, half inch. And then this slant at the top again, half inch. So this is on fold, four and a half inches wide and then nine inches long. So turning it to the right side. This is it. We're going to top stitch round this pocket covers later. Now for the pocket itself, we are marking one inch. It's on fold here, so we're marking one inch on the folded side. And then I'm just making a stitch all the way down. This is going to give us like a, a pleat. We're going to go iron it flat like so. We'll do same for the second uh, pocket piece. This is what we have. So if you are going to have a pocket on the back, my is not going to have a pocket at the back, but it's going to be the same process. Just that your pocket will start from where the dart is ending, which is four inches from the waistline. My fabric is not enough to give me a back pocket, so we're going to stick to the side zone only. So there, I just folded the pocket so it gives me exactly. 8 inches long and then 8 inches wide. Next we're going to go join the sides of the trouser as you can see using half inch. Here is a strip of fabric for the pockets. It's about one and a half inches wide and then it's long. So I'm placing it half inch below where the pocket is starting and then we're going to sew it round the sides of the pocket. I'm measuring half inch from the end of the pocket up like so so when I sew to that point I'm going to make a notch only on that strip I just notch only the upper strip and not the, the pocket piece then I'll turn my needle like so and then I will sew again until I get to half inch before this corner here I'll make a mark then I will notch when I get there. Notching only on that piece of fabric, not the pocket. Then I'm turning again up to this other side and we will sew until we get to half inch before the edge. So this is what we have. Next I'm turning it to the right side. And we're going to fold it in and then make a tiny top stitch on top of it I'm going to push that away follow those corners like that all the way to the other side Remember we have two pockets, so whatever I am doing on this piece is the same thing we are going to do for the second piece. So after sewing the pocket like so, this is our trouser piece, so this is the side. I didn't join the in, in seam yet. So from the waist now, we're measuring 18 inches down from the waist. And then from there, we're going to mark 4 inches from the seam line, 4 inches on one side, and then another 4 on this other side. So the pocket is going to be in the middle, the middle of that seam line. So I marked 19 inches from the shoulder and then another half inch up. That is where the cover, the pocket cover will sit. Then I'm marking the same eight inches, four inches on both sides. 
a sew and I'm making a mark so we're going to sew this pocket on top of that mark so starting from the 18 inches point we're going to place the pocket and then sew down remember that piece I'm sure you can see what I'm doing so round that mark we made following the mark we made 8 inches wide and 8 inches long I'm folding in that piece folding the raw edges in and then placing them exactly on that line and we're going to sew all the way till we get to the top This is what the pocket is looking like. So after sewing to this top now, we're going to press down the mouth of the pocket. Just sew it down a bit and then do the same thing on this side. Sew down for like half inch and then we'll stop. Next, we're placing the pocket bag on top like so. I'm going to sew that. Then fold it over and stitch on top like so. After that, this is what we have. Remember, we're going to do the same thing for... The other leg, this is what mine is looking like. You can add a button hole on the pocket cover and a button on the pocket if you want. I didn't do that. So if you're going to add pockets to the back, remember the process is the same. I didn't have back pockets on my own. Here now I am folding the trouser pieces together to sew the in seam. So on this knee line, I'm going to mark half of the knee measurement I'm working with, which is 12. And then the ankle which is 8, half, half of the ankle round which is 8 and then we're going to connect like so all the way to the crotch area and we'll go so. This is what the trouser is looking like so far. Here now I am cutting 4 inches long of the belt loops. I had about 6 so I'm going to place one here. And then one on this other end. Then we will place two at the dart points at the back. And then another one at the center back. There are no rules. You can place it how you want. You can have them on the side seams as well if you want to. This is how I did mine. Here is the waistband. I iron comb stay on it. It's five inches wide. And then it is as long as my waist can carry. So I'm sewing on the wrong side. This is the wrong side of the trouser piece. I'm sewing all the way around. After that, I'm going to close the edges like so. Then turn them to the right, to the outside. I'll repeat the same thing for the other end. Fold it, right sides together, close it, then turn it out. I trim up the seam allowances first, then turn it out. So next now we're going to fold in the raw edges and stitch down on the right side this time around. We need to keep folding, arranging and then top stitching until we get to the other end. Here now for the bed loops I'm sewing them down like half inch away from the waistband. Then I will stitch it on top like so folding the raw edges in I'm sure you can see that 
so the waistband i'll measure like half inch from the waistband stitch it down then fold over fold in the raw edges and then stitch at the upper part so we're going to keep doing that until we fix all the belt loops so here is what our trouser is looking like now we're going to measure all the way from the top to we get to the length mine is 41 so i measure from there to where we got 41 and then what we have left is three inches so i'm folding three inches in now as you can see then i will fold the raw edges again in to form a casing for our elastic so i'm folding folding such that one inch elastic can pass through comfortably so after folding that we're going to sew down leaving about one inch of space for the elastic to pass through after that you're going to measure your ankle measurement round i got nine inches i'm working with nine inches so i just cut elastic piece that is nine inches long and it's one inch wide so using my safety pin now i'm going to pass the elastic through after which i will sew the elastic together push it in and then close that opening we're going to be repeating the same thing on the other leg and that's it that is basically it on how to make this beautiful cargo pants if you're still watching up until this point please give this video a like it's going to help me youtube is going to show it to more people subscribe to this channel if you haven't already leave a comment below if you have any questions any comments any observations i will appreciate that thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video